Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writers Chat. This is where we like to gather together as writers, talk about all things writing for writers and by writers. And it's so good to see everybody today. I wasn't here last week and I missed you all. And it's so good to see you growing number there in the participant file. And if you're taking the time to watch this on replay, we just take time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for investing time in yourself and in our writers community to learn and grow. And we've got an exciting topic. This is something I know very little about. So we're gonna turn it over to some trusted people that can guide you a little bit better today on this topic. And I'm excited to listen and learn because it, as a writer, you can always learn. And even if it's not your genre right now, there are always things that you could learn in other genres to grow and to help you whatever field that you write in. So I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm going to turn it over to Sophia and Melissa to introduce our topic and to start today. So one of you need to take it away. Okay. Hi, I'm so excited to introduce to you um, a good friend and a fellow writer, Lisa Godfries. She's the operations manager and daily editor for Havoc Publishing at GoHavoc.com, a flash fiction e-zine and biannual anthology. More than 20 of her short stories have been published online and in anthologies, and she's the co-author of one novel. Read or listen to some of her stories for free. List is at um, www.lisagodfries.com slash stories. Lisa also serves as a director, director of operations for Realm Makers a faith-based community for fantasy and science fiction fans. And we are Real Makers fans here and pretty soon we're all gonna be Havoc fans. So Lisa, I'm so happy to welcome you to this community that has encouraged me as well as you have. Oh, thank you, Sophia. And uh, the woman that was on before is gone. I think her name was Jane. Jean. You, Jane. Jean, Jean, see, rearrange the letters, okay. Um, hello, everyone. I have most of the chat covered so that I can actually see my notes. So um, if there's something important that comes up, please somebody tell me. Um, I understand that we are going to go through this and there'll be time for questions at the end. I certainly don't mind being interrupted. If, if there's a question that comes up that's pertinent and you want to stop me, that's more than fine. Um, I was telling the ladies beforehand that um, I've done this before as two one hour sessions um, that the second part of the session was is more um, application and like trying it out so we're going to try and get through all the information part um, I am going to say now that there is a handout that you can print out or if you want to download it you can fill in the blank it's a word document I think Sophia just posted it and I think it's in your Facebook group too Yes. Um, and that's just so if you want to take notes, you have something to take notes on. I don't have a presentation I'm going to put up. So the notes are your friend, um, something to give you to look at so that you don't have to stare at my face the whole time. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I know that a lot of you haven't written flash fiction before. And so the big question is, what is it? Um, and that's kind of what we're going to cover in a journalism type field today. We're going to talk about who, what, why and then where, how, and when of short story writing. Um, first, let's start with a couple of definitions and these should be on the handout. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, don't feel like you've got to scribble furiously. Um, starting from shortest to longest, we've got nano or micro fiction. And that are, those are stories that are less than a hundred words. Um, I thought I had muted my notifications. I'm going to go up and check again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, and I have never successfully written a nano uh, fiction story, um, but I have a friend that's got one published and hers was really cute. Flash fiction is, um, depending on where, who you're talking to, um, it's less than a thousand words. Some, some people put, say less than 1500 words. At Havoc, um, our submission guidelines are a thousand. So it's a complete story, beginning, middle and end, stand on its own in a thousand words or less. Um, if you are a person that writes your first draft and then you've got to go back and you've got to take out uh, 20, 40 percent of it, then this will be uh, scary for you, but it is a good exercise for you. 
um, to learn to write succinctly. Uh, short stories are anything over 1500 words. Um, depending on, on who you're talking to, the upper limit can be 10,000, 20,000. At some point that shifts into novelette range, um, which is a, a new thing. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, whatever short story limit there is up to novella length. And novellas are generally 30,000 to 50,000. So for our purposes, we'll say between 10 and 30,000 is a novelette. Um, but again, that depends on the publisher, who's publishing it. Um, basically, my philosophy is write the story to whatever length it needs to be and then figure out what it is afterwards. And then um, novellas are a lot, or novels are genre de dependent. So if you're writing middle grade, a full length genre, a full length middle grade novel might be 25,000 words or 30,000 words. Um, novels on the short end generally um, are at least 50,000 words. And I think that's for uh, your typical uh, like serial romances um, are short. Whereas you can have some that are up to maybe 300,000 words if you're talking about higher epic fantasy. Um, certainly, uh, certainly there are a lot of really big novels out there. Brandon Sanderson writes hugely long novels. Um, I, I just don't even, I'd, I'd be writing till the day I die to get one of those done. So let's um, talk about uh, our next section on the handout, who should write short stories and why. The short answer is everybody should write short stories. Um, what we're going to go through here is just talk about why they're good for different writers. So our first one is new writers. So um, if, if you are new to story writing or new to craft, um, one of the best ways to gift your, get your craft down in terms of showing versus telling or, you know, mastering dialogue or um, being able to tell a story without dumping a lot of, of backstory, uh, all those kind of things are going to help you with uh, short stories or flash fiction are going to help you with that. Um, the thing that really helped me when I started writing flash fiction was because it forces you to figure out when a story is done. You write the story, you edit it. A lot of uh, uh, new writers, you know, we, we want to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it until it's perfect and it never gets out the door. So if you're submitting a short story, you know, everything's compressed. You write the beginning, you write the middle, you write the end, and then you get it out to someone so you can get feedback. And that feedback is really important. Um, you know, uh, there's a learning curve. So when you start, uh, you might not get published, but as you understand what people are looking for, you're going to get better and better. And once you're consistently getting short stories published, then you know you've got the concepts of writing to tackle that larger work, um, or at least apply what you've learned to your larger work. Um, so then I've got number two is writers in the drafting stage of their manuscript. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but you're working on a long, long project. Um, I am not a fast writer, um, which is why I have only have one co-authored novel to my name. Um, I've got a bunch that are almost done. Um, I have a problem with finishing, I think is my problem. Um, but sometimes, you know, there's writer fatigue with that, or you get to the point, and this is one of my favorites, is um, you've got this character and you don't really know who they are. And so one of the great things is that you can um, use that, you can use short fiction to create character backstories. So you want to know something, a defining moment in their life or something like that, go ahead and write a, write a piece of flash fiction for it. Um, Havoc encourages you to use your characters for stories you submit. Um, that's a nice thing. You've already got the story world developed. You know the character. You're trying to figure it out. You can use that as a tie-in to a novel. And um, with Havoc, uh, while we like, uh, we want the exclusive use of your story for the first six to 12 months, depending on whether it gets accepted for the anthology, uh, we don't take your rights from you. And so... Uh, once that six to 12 months is over, then you can use it as a lead magnet. You know, you can offer it. These are tie-in stories, whatever you want to do with it. It's completely up to you. So it's not like you're giving us your story for seven years or something. Um, 
so and and then it's like you know you're working on this long piece but you've got this short piece that you complete that makes you feel better like yeah i've got something done you know so you could do one of those a month or with every character or whatever and um while you're submitting them at, around and seeing if somebody wants them you can still keep working on your longer work um number three is writers in the editing stage of their manuscript um so i think we all know that you get to editing and um you can get you can get fatigued you know uh some people think that's the funnest part i think all of us would say that um writing that first draft is is difficult i much prefer the editing stage but there is something fun about writing um, and creating and drafting and so that's just a way to take a break um again uh i like to i like short fiction because you can experiment so you can use <laughs> here he is it's not a zoom call without a cat um you can use flash fiction as a way to experiment so if you always write in third person and you want to try first person great if you always write in past tense and you want to try you want to try uh, present tense? Great. Um, we've even had a couple of stories that have been very compelling written in uh, second person, which is really hard to pull off, but it, it, it is fun when you, you get one. We actually had a short story that I, I really enjoyed that was um, uh, kind of like inner office memos. Like, <laughs> you know, something's gone really, really badly at work when um, you get a a new office memo about things you now are no longer able to do and you know it was oh gosh what did somebody do who did that <laughs> i think that one was safety recall and i love that one i got it i got to edit it and i just howled the first time i read through yeah that was one of my favorite stories that month because you know i before i before i did this i worked in a crime lab and i had to write a lot of procedures and i was a manager so it just cracks me up anyway um it it it's a way to experiment so you can try a different POV. Um, you can try a different genre. Um, I think we were talking about uh, genres earlier when they, when you guys were introducing me and the idea that, you know, oh, let's learn a new genre. Well, the great thing about submitting to Havoc is we have five genres that we use. Um, Monday is mystery. So if you're a cozy mystery writer, you would enjoy that. Um, or if you like to write mysterious type creepy things, that would that's works perfectly fine too. Um, Tuesday, which Sophia edits is science fiction. That's one of my favorite days, um, mainly because I have a science background, so I get to geek out a little bit. Uh, Wednesday also is one of my favorite days because uh, it's uh, comedy. It's Wacky Wednesday, and uh, I that's my personality. I'm just kind of wacky. Thursday is thriller and fantasy is on Friday. And then we have a, a, our staff do stories on Saturday. So it's kind of fun. You There's something for everyone. Our Monday and Thursday stories don't have to be speculative fiction. We do get some just general submissions. Um, and if it's a good story, it will get accepted. Uh, but we, we do kind of all like our, you know, weird, you know, why not throw a dragon in it if you're going to write a cozy mystery or, you know, uh, why not have a, a ghost haunting people if you're going to do a thriller story? But that's just us. Um, so here's another one. Number four is writers experiencing writer's block. Um, you're stuck. You don't know what to do next. Um, maybe you've got an idea for your story. Uh, and so just write that scene. Write it as a piece of flash fiction if you want. Or again, go back and write a backstory for one of your characters or something else that's going on in the world. Maybe you're just working with the setting and you want to see what happened there. Um, so uh, that's just something to break you out of where you are and get you writing again um, and feed to fuel your creativity and help push you forward. Uh, okay, number five, we already talked about this one a little bit, is long-winded writers. Um, so flash fiction is a great means to sharpen your writing skills. Um, to tell your, a good story under a thousand words, your writing, uh, your, your words have to do double duty. So every word counts. You are going to choose your words carefully because um, adding details to a scene, you know, it's the little bitty brush strokes or just dropping enough to um, 
talk or to show something specific about a character um, without a long description. And, and so these are all skills that you can get. Um, and our editors at Havoc are already used to looking for that stuff so they can help you drill down and, and really fine tune your work. Uh, and then you learn also, you know, what do these words really need to be here? If I'm calling him uh, tall and thin, well, could I come up with a word that's, that's better than that? If he walked quickly, could we turn that into rushed? You know, these are all things we should be doing anyway. Um, no fluff allowed. Um, <laughs> here's another one, and you guys have to have to tell me how many of you do this. Uh, insomniac writers, how many of you have tried to go to sleep and the full fledged story jumps in your brain? Um, <laughs> right. And so then it's like, okay, well, you know, all those times you thought, oh, I'll, I'll write it tomorrow when I wake up and then you wake up and it's gone. Um, so, you know, pen and paper by your bed or grab your computer and just very quickly, you know, draft your story. Uh, and then it, it, you've got attack in it and you can work on it later, but you've got something on paper that you can use and then you can get back to sleep once that story's out there. Um, number seven is unpublished authors. So if you don't have any publications yet, but you'd like to build up your resume, um, maybe you're hoping to query and get the attention of an agent. Um, having a, uh, your own bibliography is nice. It shows that you can write. It shows that you are publishable. Um, and that's uh, another nice thing when you're trying to uh, sell that first novel out there. Uh, it gives you credit, right? You have credentials. And um, I think Sophia can attest to this. Uh, we get a lot of people that are getting published for the first time at Havoc, and they are so excited. And I, my first publication was um, with Splickety Publishing, which was a, a precursor to Havoc. Uh, and uh, that just was amazing. Somebody liked my stuff enough to print my story. And yeah, that's awesome. It's an that's amazing boost of confidence for a new writer. Um, and you stop saying, I want to be a writer. I want to be an author and you can actually convince yourself I am an author. <laughs> it's, it's really exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sophia's first piece, I think, was published with Havoc. Was that in 2019, Sophia? Um, it December? was Brave New World. It was um, the, was it the butterfly one or the golem one? It was the golem one. That's what it was. So that was, yeah, two years ago. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's, that's for us at Havoc, that's what it's all about. Um, we do a lot of mentoring. Um, we feel like we're there to, uh, take authors and help them grow. Uh, so maybe we're a launching point. Uh, we try and give feedback or an edit on every story we receive that meets our submission guidelines. <laughs> we have people that obstinately do not give us what we say we want. And so they don't necessarily get feedback, but people that make a, a concerted effort, we do give feedback on every story, which, uh, which is valuable, you know, to get that critique from somebody, some, from somebody that, that's an editor. Um, okay, number eight is published authors. So uh, you've got your between projects uh, and maybe you've got stuff out on query and you, uh, you're in the midst of marketing and you're not ready to start a new project, but you still wanna write short story, flash fiction, there you go. Um, or maybe you have stories, uh, an old, like you finished stories and you really miss those characters of that story world, you can always go back and visit them through short stories. So as you can see, <laughs> anybody at any stage of writing uh, can write short fiction and enjoy it. I, I did not like short fiction particularly until I started writing it and now I love to read it. Um, I just, it's just fun. So we are up to part two, which we're doing well on time, I think. Um, and this is where we get into more the nitty gritty of how. Uh, we've talked about who, so let's talk about um, where you can submit it, how you're gonna write it, and um, the win of short story writing, which I don't remember what win was, so that'll be exciting for me too when we get there. So for how, um, 
Dan Ballow, uh, I don't know if he's still working for Steve Lobby, but he was a couple of years ago. And um, he had a, a, a blog post that he wrote and he said that uh, creativity flourishes inside a fence. And uh, he was talking about social media pl media planning, but it relates to short, short stories as well. So before I started writing fiction, um, I thought I'd never be an author because I had no ideas. Uh, I believe that if someone gave me an idea, then I can make a story from it. And I was both right and wrong. Um, the magic litmus of my writing career came when I started to reimagine a Bible story that was that served as a story prompt for them, uh, for for me. Um, since then, I've been able to come up with my own ideas because I know how to play the story prompt game. So, are you guys ready to learn the story prompt game? Um, perhaps you're the kind of person who has more ideas than time to write. Uh, so, but why would you want to use story prompts? So, let me tell you. Um, story prompts, this is number one, provide framework. If flash fiction was a game, then story prompts provide part of the rules. And this is uh, one of the things that we, that we use with Havoc. Um, we've already talked about the daily genres. So if you decide, uh, okay, I want to write a cozy mystery, then you've already given yourself a prompt. Okay, you have a genre that's defined. Um, I uh, compete in a national short story writing challenge. So if you guys know about March Madness and you know about um, seeds and head-to-head -head combat and coming out with just one winner at the end, this is kind of like that. Um, the, the, place that the place is called nycmidnight.com. Maybe some of you guys have heard of it. They have a bunch of different writing challenges throughout the year. Um, they've got a short story one. They've got a flash fiction one. They have microfiction now, which I've never tried. They do screenwriting as well. But what it is, is you enter, there is a fee involved. I think it's about 40 or $45, but they put you into seeds. So they take everybody and they put them in a group of 30. And then each group gets uh, three prompts. It's a little bit different between the flash fiction and the short story, but you'll get like a genre. They'll assign you a genre and they might assign you a character or they might assign you a setting and then an item. Um, so, uh, and then the top five of that 30 move on to the next round. And then the top five of the next round move on to the final round. And um, the, the, farthest I've ever gotten is the second round. Um, but it's great, you know, when you when you win, you come in first out of 30, that's that's a great feeling. Um, so if you're writing your own story, this can work as well. You can make up your own prompts. Some writers do it intuitively. Um, it's called, what is the worst thing that can happen to my protagonist? <laughs> but you can use random prompts as well, um, which is probably the reason why story cubes are so popular. And yes, there are apps for story prompts as well. Um, story prompts, this is number two, they challenge you. So for the NYC Midnight Contest, um, one of the things I was assigned was ghost story as a genre. And that's not something I generally write. Um, I'd never written a ghost story before. Um, I read a few to determine expectations for the genre, and then I began writing. Um, the resulting story was one of my favorites, and this was in 2018. Since then, I've, I've had to do, um, the worst one was when I had to do political satire. I am not a political person, and I am not a satirist, and I did not final in that one and move on. But I did write a story that's on my, uh, oh, I don't think it's on my blog anymore, but I did uh, Star Trek Border Patrol with, um, this was with Captain Trump. And I had like all of the, <laughs> it was funny to me at the time. Um, pro probably my favorite now is one that I wrote that had to be historical fiction. And uh, the had to be historical fiction and it had to deal, do with beer. And uh, I don't remember what the other one was like a festival or something. And so I, I, uh, I researched, you know, a lot of that was research um, and found out about a festival that they used to do in Egypt a long time ago. And um, 
and I learned, I learned <laughs> that uh, women would determine whether or not they were pregnant by um, using their urine to water, uh, I think either wheat or barley. And if one of them grew, it meant they were, uh, it meant they were pregnant. And if it died, it, it meant they weren't, which was really fascinating. So I used all that to come up with a story. Um, so anyway, that is a story I never would have written without story prompts because I don't write historical fiction. I don't know anything about Egypt and, um, I, I normally wouldn't choose to write a story about beer, but there, <laughs> but there you go. It worked. Um, and so, uh, that brings us to number three story prompts force you to be creative. All right. So this goes back to creativity flourishing inside a fence. Um, well, here's where the fence comes to play. If you were told to write a ghost story, like I was, where the subject was living alone and the character is a philanthropist, what is the first thing you think of? So I'm going to let you guys pop in, pop in your comments. So if you had to write a, a ghost story where the subject is living alone and the character was a philanthropist, what is the first thing you think of? I kind of thought of Howard Hughes because he was a, a hermit. I don't know how much of a philanthropist he really was, but that would give an idea as a, a the start of a character, building a character would be to think of someone like him. All right. And he would be the one that was haunted? Um, yes. <laughs> All right. So, right. Then that's where, that's where I went, right? <laughs> the first thing you think of is a character, a philanthropist who's living alone, who's haunted by a ghost. All right. Now, if everybody in your seed writes a story about a man living alone, haunted by a ghost. Yeah. It's I not mean, they're all going to be different, but they're all going to be the same. It's all be the same. So <laughs> then here's the, here's the next part of the, the next part of this project. Okay. What's the second thing you think of? Anybody in the chat? Yeah, somebody else come up with something. Because I'm still stuck on this guy because I have him like he's haunted by a past love. But again, it's very cliche. I mean, it's you know, it's like what if those are the first things that pop into your mind and they so are she's like, already she's already ready to write. Yeah, I mean, my mind is just kind of going on with on with this, but but I like what you said about you know, those being the first thing that that is what everyone is going to think of. And so what's the twist going to be? What's the surprise going to be and having so to Rhonda back. says the ghost is a selfish person who died rich okay. and Tina threw in Elon Musk haunted in space <laughs> nice nice that would be fun to read <laughs> so then you can play with it okay let's do some let's do a twist on it what if the ghost was the philanthropist Oh, that's He's nagging the person to do the right thing and won't give them any peace. And so like the old dude who's rich <laughs> wants to have peace and is only doing the nice things because of this ghost. <laughs> right. And so that's, that's another twist on it. But here's where the real fun comes in. What's the third thing you come up with? Can't be one of the first two. Mm -hmm. I do want to point out Pam's while people are thinking Pam wrote kind of like Marley. So, you know, Scrooge, that was, that's a good place to go to for inspiration. Right. But that's been done. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just Bill says it's a ghost cat. Ghost cat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I could see a story about a, a little old woman with uh, all her cats. Being good. or maybe the ghost maybe she's a ghost and she's still trying to take care of her cats that could be mm -hmm. funny right um although gross ghost stories are supposed to be creepy so um, Rhonda says that the philanthropist's heir hoarded money so he haunts the kids till they give it away and then pam says the third thing would be come up with a twist or i was thinking a story arc a character arc so the like in scrooge the character oh, well, changes I like Kathy's. What about the ghost that is trying to stop them from giving away all their money? <laughs> yeah. Well, and Tina had a good one too, a philanthropist whose work was used for evil instead of good. So that would, you know, that'd be a good reason to come back. Atomic bomb. Yeah. yeah. So, right. So 
you can see where prompts force you to write something you wouldn't normally write mm -hmm. and this idea where okay let's let's go past the obvious and and come up with things that are maybe different um and this will help you like you know if you are not a plotter if you're a pantster and you write yourself into a corner same thing applies well, what's the first thing that could happen or even if you're a plotter what's the first thing that can happen okay what else can i come up with okay what else can i come up with and then you're getting close to the right track probably of what you should do if you want to surprise your reader okay um yes. <laughs> so then i wrote this um, I, I did this like two years ago so i didn't remember writing this but this is kind of funny so if you're working on your own story here's a story prompt for you have one of your characters, and I want you to go ahead and pick, pick, picture a character in your mind, contract rabies. rabies. So, <laughs> how, so first of all, how would you fit that into your story? Which character now has rabies and uh, what will they do to survive? Or will they survive? Have you now just killed your, your character off because they have rabies? Well, since my characters live in medieval Ireland, I don't think they're going to survive. <laughs> oh, what if they go to the Druids? They, they, you could throw something like that in there. Yeah. You if could. we want to we get a little speculative, we can. <laughs> or you could see, you know, then you can research, well, what did they do back in Ireland when people had rabies? Mm -hmm. You know, did they just kill them off? Mm -hmm. Or is there some kind of magic herb? Or, you know, let's try the home remedy and then, you know, have them die off anyway. Anyone else have uh, somebody they gave rabies to? I've been meddling with this idea of, um, it's a story idea called the, the doctor's cat. And it's instead of cats having nine lives, this cat has nine um, connections. And so it tra time travels and it's connected in this so the cat would catch rabies and would it transmit to all seven time periods that it's existing in or not? It's a plane hopping cat. So. Okay, I don't know who you are, Kathy, but I really like you. Because Kathy she says, it, Kathy Reuter, she says, okay. uh, and the character needs to be deathly afraid of shots. Yes, yes, yes. I want to read your stories, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay so this is a fun game all right fun. so then the, the we talked a little bit about where and i think after we close the recording um today and we go into our you know uh non-recorded hour we're going to play with this a little bit more i've got a writing exercise for you guys um so let's talk about you've got a story where do you where can you submit it so i've got a couple of things for you um Oh, first, first is the New York City Midnight's flash fiction or and short story challenge. So nycmidnight.com. Um, of course, you should submit to go ha to Havoc. It's <laughs> www.gohavoc with a k.com. Um, so we we already talked about the genres. We also do monthly themes. So we have two fiction anthologies that we put out per year. Um, so uh, it's a compilation of the best stories across six months and each month has its own uh, prompt so right now uh, we're we're finishing up uh, prismatic where each month was its own color so you could write a cozy mystery and it had to have the color red in it I found that um, the stories I enjoyed most were the ones where the, there was just one thing red and it was a significant thing like um there was a really great i think it was another techno techno tuesday story uh with bees and so it was yellow and the bees were yellow um we also had people do you know like every for green every single thing in the story was green and so we learned a lot a lot of um synonyms for green um and and so you know wow no <laughs> make it count <laughs> but um our next one the ones that we're opening up uh prompts for right now are uh casting call so uh 
the idea behind that is you take character archetypes and you have uh, that character in your story. Um, they don't have to be the main character in the story. They can be a side character, but just somewhere in your story, having that, that character. Um, and on our submission guidelines, you'll fall, you'll find more about that. And you guys already know, you know, you already have characters. So if you're writing a backstory about one of your characters, then boom, you already have something that you could submit. And uh, that's the kind of stuff we like to see. Um, the other place uh, that I really like if you're trying to shop a story around, and this, this goes for um, any length of fiction, any genre, um, I think they do uh, novels as well. It's called Duotrope. It's uh, www.duotrope.com. It's a subscription service, but it allows you to um, put in what you've written. So like your genre and um, the length, and then uh, whether you like what, if you, if you're just trying, how much you want to be paid for it, like professional payment, partial payment, um, any of them like freer or, or, or whatever. And then it can get, it'll give you a list of people that are, are looking for that sorts of thing. Then you can go and click on those to find out, okay, who's publishing that. And that's how I got um, my historical fiction story published um, because, you know, where am I? I'm not going to submit it to Havoc. Um, and so I searched on there and I found a place and they accepted it and they paid me 20 bucks. So, woo. <laughs> and that's on my story, my story, uh, on my blog, one of my stories you can read, it's called Child of Barley, and it's free. You can go read it for free if you're interested in reading that. So these are places, um, New York's NYC Midnight is just the place to, you know, if you want to try yourself, if you're a, comp, a competitor, um, there's a time limit on it also. So like your flash fiction stories, you have to be able to turn around in 48 hours. For the short fiction, it goes from like a week to like four days to like 24 hours. So um, not everybody likes deadlines like that. And so if the idea of doing that frightens you completely, maybe not a good fit for you. But if you think, oh yeah, I wanna try that and then do it. Um, okay, so now what? So you've got your stories, maybe it's published, maybe it's not. We've already talked about um, the, the things that you can do with it. Like what else can you do with these stories? So um, if you are a new writer and you're trying to um, build up a following for yourself, maybe you want to have a blog that publishes your short stories. Uh, I did that for a while, but um, I decided that I needed to focus more on my long stories than my short stories. Uh, so I just kind of have a static page and I, I list my stories as they get published. Um, you can use it as a freebie. So, you know, sign up for my, my newsletter and get a free story. You know, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, or you can do it as a tie-in. So you've got a book coming out um, or you have a book that's already out. And, you know, here, here's the backstory to this character, sneak peeks or reader rewards. These are all things that you can do with short fiction or you can get them published and make money from them. It is very sad to say that my $20 historical fiction story has uh, made me more money than my co-authored book. <laughs> and, uh, and Havoc, um, we, uh, our minimum payment, if you get into an anthology is $10, but we also do fundraisers where we sell t-shirts and the, uh, the money that we make, yes, uh, Sophia has on our newest t-shirt, uh, which I was wearing yesterday, which is the reason why I'm not wearing mine today, because it would look just like Sophia's. Um, <laughs> and we take the proceeds from the fundraiser and we split that across the authors of the end, our anthologies, and then we pay them. So our last, um, our last anthology, each of our authors got paid $30 for their story. And we had one author that had three stories in there. So that's 90 bucks right there. That's more than I've ever made writing fiction. So it's not, it's not a bad way to go. Um, all right. So that takes us up to our fun story exercise, which we are going to save until a little later. 
Um, and now I think it's time for questions. What questions do you guys have um, or thoughts or whatever you'd like? Y'all can come back on. If you have trouble getting in, let me know. Um, I think I put at least one person in, in jail, so <laughs> writer's chat jail. So, so let me know if you need help. Um, and then, yeah, come on. So you can ask your questions in person. Oh, Yvonne, it's so good to see you here. I, I'm glad to see you. Okay. Lisa, I had a question. Go ahead, um, Marta. How do publishers feel about it if you have, say, blogged about the characters in your book, and then they're looking at your book proposal to publish it? Have you let the cat out of the bag? Have you damaged yourself with them in any way that some ideas have been published? Um, so mostly I don't think, I don't think most publishers care about short stories. Like you're not going to get an agent because you've got, you've been, you know, you've had a short story. Um, we, you have to be careful, um, when you're signing your contract for a short story. Um, we used to have something in at Spickety that said, somebody needs to mute, um, we used to have a thing at splickety.com that, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't publish a story that was like our story. And so then people got worried, well, you know, this is a character for my novel, uh, or am I not allowed to publish it? So uh, we made it clear that that's no longer an issue. Um, I have had uh, one of our staff members that works for us wrote a short story for one of our anthologies, and then she got agented and signed to a three book deal. And her agent did not want her to publish that story because it was um, one of the stories from, you know, this, this book that's coming out or these books that are coming out. And so she withdrew it. So it, it just kind of depends on what the contract says. Um, now, I know that people, we've, um, we have best-selling authors that publish with us for our anthologies. And um, like Ron and Kendig submitted, wrote a story for us. And hers was one of her uh, characters from her, her series that's going on right now, the uh, Drosnerin saga. Um, and it was kind of like a, a character backstory for one of her characters. And so that's a nice tie in, you know, hey, if you enjoyed this story, then, you know, here's this larger world, go read it. Or, you know, she can tell her readers, hey, you know, I've got a story from this, this world that's here at Havoc if you want to go read it for free or not free because you have to buy the anthology. But um, so it can go both ways. It's a really great question. And you just have to know. If you have an agent, you can ask the question, hey, is this okay for me to do? Um, if you, but always, you know, whatever contract you sign for your writing, you need to be really careful uh, to read what it is that you are signing. Um, we don't, we don't uh, sign for rights. We're just signing for the exclusive use of your story for a certain amount of time. Thank you for that question. Anyone else have something they'd like to ask? This is your chance. I have a question. How can you use your short stories to help you promote your books that are coming out? Oh, that's a great question. And hi, Tina. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. It's nice to see these people I know. Um, <laughs> So I would think that you could use it with your newsletter list. Um, when we were first uh, working on trans transitioning Havoc from part of Splickety Publishing Group, uh, which closed into its own thing, um, we had the like the planning planning period um, where we were gearing up to start January first with this whole new enterprise we were doing that we didn't know how successful it was going to be, and it's turned out to be quite a cool thing that we're doing. Um, and so we would send out monthly newsletters and with each monthly newsletter, we would include a flash fiction story just to kind of uh, show the readers like, hey, this is kind of what we're doing. Here's something for you to do while you're waiting. So um, you, could, you could do that uh, for, your, uh, for your newsletter list. Or let's say you have a street team and you're trying to um, 
provide perks for them, you know, special things for, you know, your readers only groups or whatever, then, you know, Hey, here's this cool thing that I have. that's just for you guys. Um, maybe you're on Patreon. Uh, I know, uh, some people use Patreon and you want to, uh, provide free content for your Patreon su- subscribers. Well, that's something there that you could post that people could see like, Oh, if I, you know, if I do this, I can, uh, I can read these stories. I know uh, James Stott, Scott Bell had started a Patreon account where he publishes short stories. And I think you have to pay like a dollar to read each one or something like that. And so um, you could you could use them as teasers um, to create excitement. Like I could see like, you know, people do their their book cover, you know, reveals, you know, to get people excited. So what if you did your book cover reveal and then followed it up, you know, periodically while you're waiting for lunch with these short story teasers for your story world? Like, how cool would that be? I I really hate it when people do a book cover reveal like months before their launch because they're super excited about the really cool cover. And then I can't buy the book. Like, you know, (laughs) don't show me your cover until I can buy your book. That's just me. Um, but if you then had it and then had a follow-up, you know, then I could see where that would be really cool. Lisa, other than the whole people just ignoring your guidelines altogether, which I know that's, that's a problem, but other than that, what is one thing that you see come across your desk? That's like, this might've been a good story, but is there a common mistake that you see people make in their submissions that you could address? So, um, I, Sophia, I know will will come in and help me out with this because um, yeah. we, there's a lot. But I would think one of the newbie mistakes is um, taking too long to get into the story itself. Okay. So, you know, with a piece of flash fish flash fiction, you really need to hook people from that first sentence. And so, if you're taking the time to, you know, describe the scene and set up the story, um, and that takes you two paragraphs, well, you know, you've, you've lost a lot. So uh, one of the things that you want to do is start immediately and you can still put those setting elements in, but they need to trickle through the story. You know, just a, a, a word here and a word there. Um, you know, if you're telling a sci-fi story, then you need to drop a sci-fi element in early. So immediately the reader clues into, oh, this is a sci-fi story. Um, and, then, and then trickle down. And then the other stuff is all the typical newbie things like not knowing how to punctuate dialogue or um we get just crazy submissions that are like uh is this a story or my the worst one when i was doing mystery monday was um there's a very big difference between um creating a mystery where you're trying to answer a question and writing a story that makes the reader go what is this (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so what else do you have Sophia um we first of all we have the challenge of having four slots for the month and so we'll get us we might get a slew of submissions and so you've got maybe 30 stories competing for those four spots so sometimes we can't accept a story just because we can only accept four um, and I try to make sure I tell the authors, this is a great story, please resubmit. Um, you just have a lot of competition this month. Second, we get some of the beautiful stories have, um, have not made it to the very top because the author, oh, there was this one great story concept, but everything was doubled. All the descriptions were doubled. I mean, every, even the title, had two almost redundant descriptors. And so it was like, you have a great concept, but you need to not overuse your adjectives. You need to use, you know, just take a, take a knife to it. Um, another challenge we have had recently is almost word for word depictions of um, fiction. We've had things that are just like Bella's pregnancy. And we've had stories that are almost just like Hal and the astronaut arguing on 2001. And while they're, they look nice, it's too reminiscent of something that's published. It's, it's not, so that's a challenge too sometimes saying you need a little bit more originality um, and you can go with it, so. Also fan fiction, we don't do fan fiction. 
So um, please don't send us a Doctor Who knockoff story. Um, Kathy asked, what do you do if you get a prompt for a type of story or part of it that you don't, you really don't want to do? Um, and so I'm just going to put this here for anybody that's, that's listening and can't see the chat. Um, I assume that's specific to NYC Midnight. Um, so because, you know, if it was Havoc or someplace else, you just wouldn't write it and submit it, right? But if you are already in this contest and you get political satire with a border crossing, and I don't remember what the other thing was, um, you just do your best with it. Um, it might not be your favorite story, but it's still going to stretch you because you're going to have to research and write something that you normally wouldn't write. Um, I did my most recent story that I did for this round, I'm fairly sure isn't going to get isn't going to get to the next round. Um, I don't even remember what it was, uh, but it was one of those ones where, you know, you can just kind of tell it's an okay story, but this isn't going to be anybody's favorite story. Um, and then, you know, that's just kind of the risk you take playing the game. Sometimes I've never gotten like fantasy. I've never gotten like fairy tale. <laughs> I've never gotten science fiction. These are all things I could really do really well in, I think. Um, but that's just part of playing the game. And so if it's something that's objectionable, objectionable, like, you know, I got assigned beer and I don't want to write about beer. Well then don't, you know, write something else and you can, you'll still have a story at the end of it and you'll still get comments from the judges, but you might not make it to the next round because you, uh, you didn't complete the assignment. You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> you straight outside the fence. And, uh, and so that's not going to work so well. But that's a good I question. love your attitude about that, though. It's, it's like um, you, you try all these stories and, and you work at them. And it's like, well, you know, that one wasn't such a good story, but it's not like you're all broken up about it. It's just like you just accept it and move on. And I think that's that's really a wonderful attitude to have. It's like, you know, these are fun things to do. Let's just play with it. Have fun with it. If it works out, great. If you get in the finals, great. If you win, yay. But if not, you still have a story that wasn't in existence before. Oh, Isabel, let me unmute you, sweetie. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, she's still muted. No, I was just agreeing with what you said. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> I did some literacy competitions and I had the beginning of something and then I could add on to it and turn it into a novel. That's just that. Yeah. Um, Tina said, zombie stories can serve as political satire, so you can adapt the genre a bit, right? Absolutely. So when I got my polit political satire, I set it in space and did a Star Trek knockoff with, uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> didn't win any awards, but it was a funny story. <laughs> Well, I asked you about things that like are newbie mistakes. What are some things that are like, I don't know whether they'd be newbies, but, but just wows, what really lights up a story for you? Well, that would be just talking about some of our favorite stories, right? Um, Caitlin Emery, who is on staff with us, she wrote a story that I edited recently that was one of those where I was like, I wish I had written this. This is like the best thing ever. She did, um, it was for Red. And um, she took the story of Snow White and made Snow White the villain. Mm -hmm. um, and she made Snow White a vampire. And so, because, you know, you think about it and you're like, of course, she's pale. She's got dark hair. She's got blood red lips. Why didn't I think of that? And that was like amazing. Um, my favorite story for our last, uh, our our anthology that's coming out um, in April was a story about Medusa um, called Serpents. And uh, this is again a twist. So in this story, Medusa is a very sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a redemption arc that involves God at the end, which is just, I just, oh, I love that story so much. Um, and so it, it just, it kind of depends. Uh, I like stories that are, um, well, well-written, of course. Um, I tend to like ones that have, yeah, it's just, it's something in, um, maybe they surprise you in a way, mm -hmm. uh, or they don't, and not by a twist, just something in there, 
you know, makes you think, oh, I haven't seen this before. This is a lot of fun. I also like ones that have just fantastic world building. My favorite theme that we ever did was um, when we were doing our uh, anthology on tropes. Uh, what was the name of that one called? Yeah, I don't know. Wait, hold on. <laughs> it wasn't so binge worthy. So binge worthy. Uh, one of our months was um, out of this world or, you know, a place we'd never been before or something. I can't remember, but it was all like, it had to be the, this, this new setting, this strange place. It's and for me, I just world. loved it because uh, it was just completely original and creative. And then you had characters in it and it was just always a lot of fun. Uh, we get a lot of, uh, we get a lot of twist on fairy tales. Uh -huh. um, we've had Aladdin in space multiple times <laughs> and uh and and uh one of the ones that was uh from our one that came out was uh and this i think was a techno tuesday too was a uh, the story of jericho in space oh. that one was really cool red uh, cord i loved that one it made me have shivers <laughs> yeah it's just it was really cool um havoc is a general market publication uh so it's not all christian fiction the thing that distinguishes us is that we do like Christian fiction and we will publish Christian fiction. So it's not like a, some general market publishers that, you know, you throw anything Christian in there, it's not going to get published. Um, so just for whatever that's worth. Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much. So we're getting to the top. Does anyone have one last question? If Oh gosh, I meant to look to see. I do this every week. What is next week? Melissa, do you know? Or am I putting you on the spot too? I even had my drive open and then closed Lately, it. But not too bad because it's actually relating. We are going, um, and now I'm having a name for it. And I really hate that. Um, <laughs> Gina knows. Uh, the, the ones who are creating, oh. who created Realm Makers. Um, Jean, you're still muted. Scott and Rebecca Minor. On speculative go. fiction. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I work for them too. Yep. <laughs> Going to join us and talk about speculative fiction. So we're we're on a bit of a kick here. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's great. All right. Um, okay. Well, everybody, we're really glad that you joined us today, Lisa. Thank you. It was a lot of great information. Really appreciated the handout. I've got mine, and I'm going to save it. I've I've only written a couple short stories, never anything I would consider flash fiction, but this is kind of motivating me to think about along those lines. So, you know, that's really, that's fun. Really yeah, you can, you can shop those short stories around at Duotrope. Oh, and uh, Sophia, uh, I, there's a handout to you on the resources that I mentioned. Oh yeah. Um, if you want to paste the link to that. And I think it's in your Facebook group as well. Uh, if you don't see it here, but um, that's, that's available. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I also have some story prompts I think I put on that, places where you can get story prompts. I like that idea. That sounds like a lot of fun too. Okay, everybody, thanks for being here. If you're watching on the replay, we're really glad to have you. You can go to our Facebook group, Writers Chat members, our Facebook page, Writers Chat, um, to get these uh, links as well, so to the resources in the handout. And we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.